What's going on, everybody? RJ Joey here from SB Nation's bloggingtheboys.com. Hope all is well wherever you are. We hope you're happy, safe, healthy, and that you are ready for Conference Championship Sunday in the NFL. Two teams are going to punch their tickets to Super Bowl 58. This is a very, very, very big week, and of course, we would not know that as Dallas Cowboys fans. The Cowboys have been trying to get to this game, trying to get to this weekend for 28 years in a row now, and hopefully... 29 is the magic number and really we are gathered here today to discuss how the Dallas Cowboys can hopefully get here this time next year. Um, I do want to say off the top that this is an episode of the Ocho, an episode of the Ocho, if I were grammatically correct. Uh, We are recording both the audio and the video uh, because this is an important subject. So what up world to the podcast audience in case somebody, anybody does not know, uh, I have a podcast that drops every Thursday on the Blog and the Boys podcast network called the Ocho because I'm that creative. Um, Also, in case anybody on the podcast that doesn't know, I appear in a lot of videos on our YouTube channel. So subscribe to the podcast network wherever you get your podcast subscribe to the youtube channel we obviously have a lot of things coming out all over the place because we never stop caring about the dallas cowboys let's be real with ourselves um and that means that we all have a lot of passionate thoughts on this subject um and i've been talking about this subject a lot lately but i wanted to do this episode and i wanted to do it on an audio sense and a video sense because i think it's imperative that we all understand what is at play here now if you pay attention to anything i do if you read the articles i write at blog on the boys.com If you follow me on social media, if you listen to the podcast, if you watch the videos, whatever the case may be, you know that my position has been that the Dallas Cowboys are painted into a corner when it comes to Dak Prescott. That is mostly true. Um, Now, I wouldn't say the calculus has changed, but I will say as we've gotten further and further removed from the just devastating, embarrassing, humiliating playoff loss that Dak Prescott was a poor factor in, obviously, um, I wouldn't say that different options have presented themselves, but let's let's just have the conversation. So here are the kind of quick facts, the rundown, you know, TLDR, things you need to know. Dak Prescott has a $60 million cap hit as far as the Dallas, Cow- Dallas Cowboys salary cap is concerned here in 2024. That is untenable. That, that cannot happen. That cannot be something that they move forward with. Uh, so they're going to have to figure something out in terms of, you know, lowering that number, especially if they want to surround him with other players, right? Because the goal is to feel the best team possible. We agree in this sense. Okay, well, there's really only one logical way if you believe in Dak Prescott. And I understand that that is a, um, that is a loose idea right now. Now, Remember, we are talking about the second team all pro quarterback in the NFL, but we are also talking about somebody who was horrible in the playoff loss and whose playoff record now pretty much speaks for itself. That is obviously a difficult reality to reckon with here. So it's a, it's just amazing how the Dallas Cowboys always find ways to be in, you know, just right in the middle of the rock and the hard place. And that's kind of where they are in a general sense right now, but certainly as it relates um, to the Dak Prescott situation. So, okay, we've covered this. He's got a $60 million cap hit. That cannot be the case. There are two options if you want to move on from that, because a lot of people ask the question, why can't we just cut Dak? Well, because that would be silly. Let's, let's be real. We're going to have a real conversation. We're going to deal in practical realities here. A lot of people say, let's just trade Dak Prescott. You can't trade him. He has a no trade clause. Even if you could get Dak Prescott on board to trade him to Team X, he would obviously have to, you know, be on board. He would have to waive his no trade clause, and the Cowboys would have to eat basically a massive number for no reason. Even if you don't believe in Dak Prescott, if you're going to eat that number, I think you agree that it is better to have the quarterback, the second team all pro quarterback, than to not have the second team all pro quarterback. Now, I keep saying the second team all pro quarterback, but I do want to recognize that it is fair to doubt Dak Prescott. It is fair, and this is the most I've ever doubted him, which is strange because we're coming off of the heels of the most that I think a lot of us have ever believed in him. The dichotomy between them is just, again, astounding. It is the most Dallas Cowboys thing of all time. And so at present time, I'm putting this together on Wednesday, January 24th, about 10 days removed from the season ending. And things have happened to where I'm now willing to have some different conversations. I'm willing to entertain some things in a more serious sense, things that have, you know, seemingly developed some... I don't call it steam or momentum, but but things that that seem legitimately possible more than just in a world where anything is possible, possible. You get what I'm saying? So let's kind of dive into it. Let's take a look um, at the first thing that we're going to discuss here. Now, the podcast audience cannot see this, but the YouTube audience obviously can. Uh, What you're looking at is an excerpt from an article in the Dallas Morning News that Michael Gelkin wrote on Tuesday, January 23rd. Everybody, please support the Dallas Morning News, support journalism. Uh, Michael Gelkin is one of the very best people on the Dallas Cowboys beat. Um, So I'm going to skim through this um, because I don't want to, you know, if you want to pause it and, and take a look, it's certainly up to you. Uh, but 
This is Gelkin talking about Dak Prescott. Says his contract is not a standard four-year deal. Talking about the contract that Dak Prescott is on, obviously, um, which obviously he signed with the Cowboys now three years ago in 2021. Two void years were attached on the back end in 2025 and 2026. That's why this year is the last year of the contract. But there are those kind of void dummy years that you know NFL teams use to kind of push money around, which the Cowboys have done before. As Gelkin notes, these dummy years were added to allow the Cowboys more financial flexibility when managing the salary cap. They did. And can still, they restructured his contract before the 22 and 23 seasons. Each time they executed what is called an automatic conversion, which is when the team converts a portion of a player's salary into a signing bonus. Well, while salaries count against the team's cap in the same year the salary is earned, signing bonuses spread across a contract's life up to five years. The Cowboys and all NFL teams do this all the time. This is a very common mechanism, and the Cowboys will probably exercise it with other players if they don't do it with Dak Prescott specifically this particular offseason. Anyway, moving on. The void years in 25 and 26 allowed the Cowboys to spread the bonus more thinly because you have more years, more options, obviously, in effect, pushing more cap dollars into the future. Not really a problem if you believe that Dak Prescott is going to be on your team in those years if you're going to work on another extension, which was kind of the thought three years ago, right? When the Cowboys did this deal in 2021, the presumption at the time was always that they would get another extension done. But Obviously, the volatility with the way this most recent season happened to end kind of changed the narrative of it all, uh, as we've discussed only the Dallas Cowboys. Um, and Gelkin notes this, just singular line, this option remains at the Cowboys' disposal. Prescott's owed $29 million salary in 2024. Hypothetically, the Cowboys have the sole discretion the sole, meaning this is not a decision that involves Dak Prescott. This is something I've been talking about on the radio this week. The sole discretion to reduce his salary as low as $1.21 million. That's just the way the salary looks on paper. That's them pushing money. That's the finances of it all. Dak Prescott isn't losing money in this process. Uh, But the Cowboys are kicking that can down the road and ultimately do have to carry that cap charge in the future. Again, that is if they flip this particular switch, the $27.79 million reduction would be paid to Prescott as a bonus. It becomes a bonus. Obviously, that's the mechanism that's being flipped and become evenly distributed across the 24, 25, and 26 salary caps. At, we're going to call this 60, but it's $59.46 million. At $60 million, Prescott is now slated to have the second highest cap hit of any player this season. Obviously, Cleveland Browns quarterback Deshaun Watson is number one. If the Cowboys convert the maximum amount of Prescott's salary into a signing bonus, Prescott's new number would be, we're going to call this 40, 41 million million dollars uh the seventh highest cap hit the cowboys can generate gelkin has the exact figure here 18.53 million dollars we'll round up and call that 19 million dollars right you know let's great on a curve here in 2024 so the tldr for everything that you just kind of heard or saw is the cowboys can instead of extending dak prescott because this same idea the same philosophy is applied or is applicable if you extend a player right you adjust the contract you turn things into signing bonuses etc cetera, etc cetera. you change the number the cap number that the player is obviously contracted to you for um but a restructure is not that a restructure is just an adjustment in a financial sense of the current contract so These are the two real options as they stand for the Dallas Cowboys. They can extend Dak Prescott, which requires a new deal, right? An extension, which would see Dak Prescott in all likelihood become the highest paid player in NFL history. He would probably make somewhere, my own guess, is somewhere around $57 million on an annual average basis because that's the way quarterbacks get paid. The next one gets paid a little bit more than the last one, and the last one was Joe Burrow as the Kansas City Chiefs and Detroit Lions kicked off the 2023 season. Um, But if you don't believe in Dak Prescott, and again, I understand that the foundation in which we're kind of having this discussion has recently been pretty shaken. If you don't believe in Dak Prescott, you can kind of go all in. And and this is something that Jason Fitzgerald of OverTheCap.com discussed this week. I wrote about his um, his excerpt, or I used an excerpt uh, excerpt of his article in my article at BlogOnTheBoys.com. And and these are the only two options as as kind of, I don't want to say I see them, but as logic sees them. Because the Cowboys have decided now to come back in 2024 with Mike McCarthy. You know, yeah, you can talk about how it's technically possible that Dak could demand a trade or whatever the case may be, but the Cowboys aren't bringing Mike McCarthy back to have him go at a contract year with a non-Dak Prescott quarterback, right? If, If we're, you know, if we're having a real conversation here, that would be silly. And so, okay, so at the very least, you know, your two people in these particular positions this particular season are Mike McCarthy and Dak Prescott. Now, the reason, the whole reason I'm willing to entertain this discussion in my mind is because this is not the first extension you're giving Dak Prescott, the one that he ultimately got in 2021, the one that he should have gotten in 2019. Dak Prescott is north of 30 years old. 
And if this season, the 24th season, were to go awry, then Mike McCarthy's probably out, right? And the Cowboys are suddenly looking for a new head coach in 2025. I do not think it would be wise to have your new head coach, whoever it wound up being, right? Let's just call it, you know, John Doe. I do not think it would be wise to have John Doe come in and have Dak Prescott, you know, now further north of 30 and entering his 10th NFL season. Somebody who he would be tied to, obviously, you know, for at least the first handful of seasons that John Doe would be coaching the Dallas Cowboys. There's a lot of history that the Cowboys are betting against here, um, besides their own. And the history is that Dak Prescott is now, in 2024, going to be entering his ninth season in the NFL. There is not a lot of precedent. There is some, but there is not a lot of precedent for quarterbacks who have that late in their career had gotten to a Super Bowl for the first time. Peyton Manning did it with the Indianapolis Colts and obviously later on with the Denver Broncos and and was successful and won two Super Bowls, although he did lose two more, Um, which goes to show, again, once you kind of break through, you know, it can kind of really break through. But again, now we're talking about Peyton Manning. Um, The other example is Matt Ryan. Obviously, 2016 was his ninth season in the NFL, the 20-3 game, although he never did get back, but he did win league MVP that year for what it's worth. Um, Ken Anderson of the Cincinnati Bengals way back in the very, very early 80s did get the Cincinnati Bengals uh, to the Super Bowl they lost in his 10th season in the NFL. So again, not a lot of precedent, right? And so that's where, because of the the overall situation, the kind of franchise situation, it's fair. It's fair to say maybe you, you want to leave yourself some room for flexibility in 2025 to have a clean break at head coach, to have a clean break at quarterback, and to move on in an entirely new and different direction. I get that. I understand that. I can compartmentalize that in my particular mind. I think it is significant. And I said this on the radio this week in San Antonio. By the way, if you did not know, I'm now the co-host of our morning show in San Antonio, 941 San Antonio Sports Star, myself, Rob Thompson. Uh, you can watch that live here on YouTube if you are a YouTube uh, user. Just look for the SA Sports Star YouTube channel. You can see our handle right there. You can watch us or listen to us um, live every day if you'd like, 6 to 10 a.m. Central Standard Time, or obviously catch the rewatch at your own convenience. You can, of course, listen on 941 in the San Antonio area. And we did talk about this um, because it's important. And what what I said when we talked about it on the radio was Michael Gelkin is among the very, very, very best beat writers in terms of the local media when it comes to the Dallas Cowboys. And so this is significant. Now, this is Gelkin, you know, just laying out the options, but this is significant. Now, this is this is something that is a real conversation. This isn't just like, well, you know, this is a possibility. No, this is a real legitimate option. The Cowboys could choose to restructure Dak Prescott. And the reason that makes sense is while you are pushing money into the future, it does create this all-in approach here in 2024. Yes, you you will have to pay that credit card off at some point in the future, but that's a future problem. This is something I talked about with Brandon Gowden here on the blog on the Boys Universe on the NFC's mixtape. Go all in, create that 19, we're rounding up again, million dollars in salary cap space and use it in the here and now. And guess what? If you win the Super Bowl, right? Because that's the goal. I reckon, oh, they're going to win the Super Bowl. I know, I know the jokes. But if you win the Super Bowl, you figure it out. You pay Mike McCarthy. Okay, so it's just money, right? You pay Dak Prescott. You give him the richest contract in franchise history, despite the fact that he would likely be hitting the open market. So what? And even if he were to walk, even if you – the process here would be you restructure Dak Prescott's contract. You make him a free agent, a true free agent in 2025. You cannot franchise tag him. You cannot protect him. You cannot – restrict him from talking to any other teams you cannot control that you just would have to kind of be at his mercy if you wanted him back but in this hypothetical we're talking about him leading the Cowboys of the Super Bowl and if he did even if he walked while that would suck on one level you won the Super Bowl right <laughs> like if you would be able to figure things out and it, even if you couldn't figure things out you would buy yourself one heck of a grace period because you won the Super Bowl um, now here's the thing Cowboys, like I said, can create about $19 million in salary cap space when it comes to the Dak Prescott restructure specifically, and that's if they restructure to the maximum amount. But again, if you are going all in, you might as well do the maximum amount. As we take a look, I mentioned overthecap.com. Over the cap right now has the Cowboys um, about, we'll round up again, about $20 million in the red relative to current salary cap space or projected salary cap space, I should say. So this Dak Prescott restructure can kind of get them back in the black. Again, relatively speaking, we're rounding, you know, there's a few kind of, you know, digits that aren't necessarily accounted for, but I think you understand my point. So that kind of gets the Cowboys back to ground zero. And there are still several restructures that they can do. There are other things, other mechanisms, other switches that they can flip, as we talked about a little while ago, to create even more salary cap space in the name of going all in, of souping up 
this roster of trying to kind of go at this, you know, I hate that we all reference the last dance. I hate that now. I mean, there's a wonderful, you know, documentary series, but we don't have to do that every single time, but you could call it a last dance. You could call it a, uh, you know, a final hurrah. You could call it whatever you want, but you, you know, more than anything, you keep yourself alive in 2025 to reset. You ensure that John Doe isn't entering a situation where he already kind of, you know, doesn't have control over one of the most important things, which is the franchise quarterback, right? John Doe, whoever it is, deserves that opportunity to say, well, I want Dak Prescott or I don't want Dak Prescott or I want whoever. Whoever your head coach is should have the authority to make that decision. Mike McCarthy obviously didn't have that, you know, if you want to call it a luxury, because when he landed with the Dallas Cowboys, Dak Prescott was already the franchise quarterback, although to be fair, he was set to enter, you know, unrestricted free agency. The Cowboys placed the franchise tag on him, you know. Then we got here. Anyway, um, Michael Gilkin wasn't the only person who wrote about this. Todd Archer, who was equally great in terms of you know being a member of the local media. Obviously, this is um, from ESPN where Todd Archer works. Um, Going to read this, you know, skim through it. Uh, Todd wrote this on Wednesday. Cow- the Cowboys already planned to restructure the contracts of all-pro guard Zach Martin and cornerback Trayvon Diggs, who's coming back from a torn ACL. I wrote about this as well uh, on Wednesday, which would net them about $20 million in salary cap space. So, again, we can – you know, you can get 20. For, again, we're rounding up now a little bit more here. You can get 20 from Dak. You can get 20 from Zach and Trayvon Diggs. Todd notes the Cowboys could also restructure Terrence Steele. They could cut Michael Gallup, make him a post-June 1st cut, and gain $9.5 million, although that money would not be available until, you know, after June 1st. That's why it's a post-June 1st cut. And if the Cowboys do get C.D. Lamb signed to an extension this offseason, they can lower his cap hit this season and spread that out with the bonuses and things that we talked about already at the top of this video and the top of this discussion. So the point is the Cowboys can create, if they really want, with the flick of just kind of a handful of pen movements here, the Cowboys can create a significant amount of salary cap space if they want by restructuring Zach Martin, restructuring Trayvon Diggs, potentially restructuring Terrence Steele, making Michael Gallup a post-June first cut, although again, that money would not be available in the crux of free agency, obviously, it would be three months after the fact, but, and by restructuring Dak Prescott. Now, those are some bold decisions, and those are decisions that I wouldn't say they're all bold decisions. It's not really bold to restructure the Trayvon deal or the Zach Martin deal. When the Cowboys did those deals, they were done, like we talked about with Dak Prescott, with the express and the sole purpose of sort of being able to do this. The Cowboys love to do this. The Cowboys love to dip into these contracts from their franchise, their cornerstone players, and create salary cap space. We've seen them do that many, many, many years with Zach Martin, with Dak Prescott, as we talked about. They did it with Tyron. They continue to do it with Tyron Smith basically forever and ever and ever. But my point is they can create all this salary cap space. And the biggest one of all, the primary decision they're going to have to make is what they're going to do with Dak Prescott. Because if they're going to extend him, then that kind of inhibits you from going all in. You can create salary cap space, but you obviously cannot necessarily create as much. And Dak Prescott is a part of your future. And then you have to really, you know, make sure that you get CeeDee Lamb taken care of, that you get Micah Parsons taken care of. If you want Tyler Biotish back, who is a, a set to be a free agent this offseason, those things become different discussions if you want to extend Dak. But if you don't want to extend Dak, and that's going to be, quite frankly, a very interesting thing. If the Cowboys choose to restructure Dak Prescott, that is them saying, we do not know if he is going to be the quarterback of this team after this season. That's what a restructure means. And that's not being hot takey. That's not being dramatic. That's not being silly. That is literally what that means. That is them saying we would rather restructure than extend to maintain flexibility for the sake of John Doe. And we'll call it Jack Doe, whoever winds up being the quarterback if it isn't Dak Prescott, right? And so this decision, this is a fork in the road. And again, the way we know that it's going to be one of these two paths is because they brought Mike McCarthy back. If the Cowboys had moved on from Mike McCarthy, and I don't mean to entertain a hypothetical that isn't valid because they're keeping Mike McCarthy, but let's just say for conversation's sake, they had moved on from Mike McCarthy and they had brought in a new head coach, whoever it is, whoever it was, whoever it would have been, pick your favorite, pick your favorite flavor. Then the conversation becomes very different because John Doe is no longer a hypothetical. Now you can consult with John Doe. Do you want Dak Prescott around John Doe? Do you want Dak Prescott to get this extension? Because if you do, then let's take care of it. Do you not want him around? Do you want him in a prove-it deal? Do you, would you then want to give John Doe kind of that weird first year where he'd kind of have to be, you know, figuring things out on the fly while also trying to contend for a Super Bowl? That wouldn't be fair to anybody. So the fact that the Cowboys have brought Mike McCarthy back 
is logical in some senses. It's disappointing in a lot of them, obviously. But it makes sense now to put him, Mike McCarthy, that is, on the same timeline as Dak Prescott. And that annoys me greatly. I would love to sit here and tell you that the most logical solution would be to give Dak Prescott the extension that I believe he has earned. But I think given the overall state of the team, the overall state of the franchise, the fact that the head coach is in a contract year, it always makes sense to have your head coach and your quarterback paired on a parallel trajectory. You look at uh, on the subject of new head coaches. I'm putting this together a little bit after the Los Angeles Chargers officially landed Jim Harbaugh to be their new head coach. His five-year deal now puts him on the same trajectory as Justin Herbert. That's what you want. This has to be a simpatico relationship. They have to run and move and operate in parallel. And if you give Dak Prescott the extension, again, I can completely make peace with that. I think he's a very, very talented quarterback. And if you don't, then I think you're overreacting just a little. I think it's it's totally fair to doubt him like we've talked about already, but again, the second team all pro quarterback, so let's just come back down to earth a little bit, but you are not in any way parallel with any coach for the foreseeable future because you're certainly not parallel with Mike McCarthy because now you believe in the quarterback and you don't believe in the head coach and now you've empowered the quarterback and the coach is obviously already in a lame duck sort of situation but any conversation any debate any whatever leans in favor of the dude with the long-term contract with the club which in this hypothetical would be Dak Prescott and even if you move on from Mike McCarthy in 2025 now you bring in a new head coach John Doe as we've talked about and John Doe knows well Dak Dak's already got the extension. Dak's already here. Dak has way more kind of, you know, standing in the organization than I do. You're not on a parallel trajectory. And so given where we are, where we're at, how we got here, et cetera, et cetera, I think it makes the most sense to go the restructure route, to go the all-in route, kick the can down the road, worry about that later, quit being so worried about the future that you're afraid to act in the here and now. That's my assessment. That's where I think things stand with the Cowboys. And so, um, It'll be very interesting. I, I I think we'll get an answer on this sooner rather than later. And by that, I don't mean tomorrow, but you have to know this information, right? You have to understand how much salary cap space you're going to have to work with, especially as free agency approaches. It's the final week of January. So you've got about six weeks, you know, ish to kind of figure this out. And so this is the first door you have to walk through. It's not even the first door. We're at a fork in the road. They got to pick one direction, not the band, extend deck, restructure deck. Once you do either of those things, you have set the temperature for the way this offseason and obviously this season is going to go for the Dallas Cowboys. It's going to be fascinating. I hope that this was a helpful breakdown in terms of the, I wouldn't even say the options, but just the the kind of situation and what you know what choices the Cowboys have to make. And you're certainly welcome to, to come to the conclusion on your own what you think is the best choice. I would love to hear that. Um, if you're interested in hitting me up on Twitter or Instagram, my uh, handles there are at RGOJOA. You can also follow me on threads. I worded that very awkwardly. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, uh, or threads at RGOJOA or on TikTok at RJ.Ochoa. If you would like to email me, you can do so, RJ.Ochoa at SBNation.com. You can also leave a comment on our YouTube videos. I'll do my best to get to those as well. Um, like I said, you can listen Listen to me on the Blog on the Boys podcast network. I'm featured there a lot. Um, you can also watch me here on the Blog on the Boys YouTube channel. Um, you can listen to me every Monday through Friday from 6 to 10 on 941 San Antonio Sports Star. And we are now starting to podcast on the Blog on the Boys podcast network segments from our show every day. So you're getting to hear me a little bit more, um, which hopefully is a good thing for you. And also getting to hear Robbie T, uh, Rob Thompson, my wonderful co-host. So uh, that about does it. Um, I hope that this worked out for both the podcast and the video audience. I love you all just the same same and um yeah let's go ahead and uh let's chunk deuces so be well eat something delicious watch something amazing on television go ravens and lions those are my two picks and uh yeah thanks so much for hanging out see you next time